And it took me about 33 years of <clears throat> basically doing research in consciousness, changing a variable, see what happened, change it again, hold that variable still, change another variable, and see what affected what, you know, what was connected, how were they connected, uh, what enabled you to do it, what inhibited you from doing it. So about 33 years worth of that, I thought I understood enough about consciousness to write it down. And I, that's when I started writing the My Big Toe books. Mainly, that was a theory of consciousness, but I also knew that it has to also be a theory of the physical world as well. Because one of the things I learned doing this is that consciousness is fundamental and the physical world is not. Mm. And I learned that because I could do things within consciousness that changed or affected the physical world right but i couldn't do anything in the physical world that actually fundamentally changed consciousness so the arrow of causality was from consciousness to the physical so knowing that consciousness was fundamental then the physical world had to be derivable from the understanding of consciousness and how consciousness worked and i uh Worked on that problem, and probably about two, three years after I'd published the My Big Toe books, I uh, got a couple of aha moments, and I was able to derive quantum physics directly. So quantum physics has some big mysteries in it. Uh, why uh, should reality be probability at the, at the bottom level? You drill down into reality. When you get to the bottom, you don't find little particles. You find probability. And also, you know, and these, these things came out of the double slit experiment, which was yeah. 1915 to 1925 is kind yeah. of when that was taking place. The other thing they found out was that... This is the observer effect, right? Yeah, the, the observer effect, that what the, what, the, what, the man, what the human knew, the information he knew would change what the result of the experiment was. So that was the observer effect. If he knew these facts, then you get one answer from the experiment. If he didn't know those facts, you'd get a different answer. So that said that we were entangled some way with our reality. It wasn't just that you know, there was this physical reality. And the idea that reality was physical was thrown out because the way you, the way you compute things in the physical reality is with probability, not with particles. And you know, the physicists that are uh, the atom smashers, you know, the ones that go to CERN and th bang particles into targets or into each other and look at what comes out the other side, they will all tell you, and it's pretty much a, an accepted uh, idea in physics, that reality is not matter-based, it's information-based. Mm -hmm. That's They will tell you that? Yeah, they will tell you that. Physics, that's a pretty accepted uh, viewpoint in physics that reality is information based now they won't go any further than that because they don't know what the next step is and actually the founding fathers of, of uh, quantum physics which would have been you know Bohr and, and uh, Planck and Schrodinger and Heisenberg all those guys and then eventually Einstein came over and joined them as well they also came to the conclusion that consciousness was fundamental. You get quotes from all of those guys with that as their, as their takeaway from doing the double slit experiment. Consciousness was fundamental. You can dig up a quote of Einstein writing to, to uh, Baum, who was a kind of a student coworker with him, um, saying that, I know that consciousness has to be at the root and has to be fundamental, but I have no idea how to turn that into physics. I have no idea what to do with that. Right. So they, they knew that consciousness was fundamental because that's what the experiment told them. Well, the crazy thing about physics and consciousness is it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, there's no path to consciousness from dead matter. Right, but, right. There, but there is a path the other way. Right. There is a path from consciousness to physics. So with you know, the physicists, ever since the double slit, the physicists have realized there was some paradigm, some shift in the way that you look at reality that would make quantum physics be rational. 
you know, they call quantum physics just weird science. You know, nobody will ever understand quantum physics. You know, that was a, a quote uh, from a Nobel laureate. But anyway, um, so they were looking for this new paradigm shift that would enable them to understand what happened with the double slit, understand quantum physics. And now it's been 100 years. 2025 was, a, was 100 years later. No progress, not even a small step forward in coming up with that paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. Well, I came up with that paradigm shift. I understand that. I can derive quantum physics from consciousness, from an understanding of consciousness. So that is you know, the big toe. You know, it's a theory of everything. I found out that not only could I explain quantum physics, but I could explain relativity. The big, the big unknown there is why is the speed of light a constant? It's always a constant. It can't go slower, it can't go faster, it always goes just the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And if you have a source, like a flashlight, and the flashlight's going you know, one half the speed of light, and then you turn the flashlight on, you'd expect the light coming out would go faster, it would go you know, one and a half times the speed of light, but it doesn't. It's invariant to the velocity of the source. It always goes just the speed of light. And that I was able to show logically as well, how, why that works. And then the neat thing is that once you understand consciousness, you not only can derive the objective world, which is basically physics, you can also derive a scientific model of the subjective world. And then you can understand why some people are happy and some people aren't. You can understand uh, what we're here for. What's the purpose of us being here and how are we here? And it all falls out logically and scientifically. No assumptions. The only assumption in it is that consciousness exists. Everything else is just, is just logic. And it's, a, it's science. It also tells you... Uh, you know, it informs uh, what it makes changes in metaphysics, it answers all the paradoxes in metaphysics, it answers all the paradoxes in physics. Physics has a lot of paradoxes that they know things are like this, but they don't know why. Mm. You know, the speed of light and the quantum physics are just two of those. That there's, a yeah. whole, there's a whole bunch of those. It's like I came up with about 35 of them, and this model answers all of those all of those paradoxes. Mm. So I guess that's kind of how I got there is mm -hmm. that I worked on it for for many, many years trying to understand how consciousness worked. And I worked from the inside. So I could do those things. I could heal. I could, you know, remote view. I could I could do those and see how they were affected. What do you mean heal? Heal. You can use your mind to to modify the problem, well, heal, I mean heal. Somebody's ill, you can heal them with your mind. That is a, that's a real thing. You can do that. Matter of fact, that's... You've done that? Oh, sure. I've done that many times. 